Gert Robbins, um, after working in New York, Berlin, Brussels, uh, visual artist Gert Robbins settled in his birthplace, Borglom, quite known here, a village with merely 2,000, uh, 2000, 200 inhabitants, I guess, and it's quite beautiful. And in his, in his artistic work, he focuses on this specific physical environment of Borglom. Um, in preparation of this AZ night, he, had, he has chosen five images of his work instead of five statements in order to uh, give us a certain uh, yeah, perspective and, and claim. Um, voilà, the images will be your uh, conversation pieces. Um, Gert Robbins, would you like to join me? Oh, so you already knew uh, Catherine's work? No, I didn't, but um, uh, I think a few months ago, somebody from Holland sent me this book uh, to tell me that there was this kind of research on the village, uh, because I had that kind of project in my village uh, to tell me that I wasn't alone. Yeah, oh, <laughs> nice. So, reset has been a, actually like a name covering um, or a concept covering a few projects. But what I'm wondering, actually, my first question would be, uh, you traveled the world and you decided to settle, uh, come back to Borglom. Why? Actually, um, my father was a military uh, soldier. My mother was a nurse uh, and there was actually in this village, no uh, trigger for me to become an artist. And um, <clears throat> through television, we had Kunstaken, uh, before your time, I think. I uh, <laughs> saw a few of them, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Regina Klauert, um, and we had This is Belgis. Um, so there was kind of, uh, for me, like, was very much interested and things who were not actually meant for me, because if you come from that place, this is uh, uh, mostly a uh, farmer-oriented area. Uh, and I was just always interested in this kind of aesthetics. Uh, and uh, when I was 16, I had a tumor in my head. And after this operation, I went to my father. I start first uh, to, to go for architecture uh, and the year, after, the year later I decided here in Hassel to study art school and I really decided that this was for me a very uh, meaningful thing and I was very actually very depressed in that village uh, when I was only for me was this kind of uh, art practice also a way to survive and to give extra meaning uh, and I felt it was very uh, important thing for myself. So that was why I... And then I, I moved to Brussels to study art. And then you moved back? That was a trigger to move back? Um, I studied Brussels, uh, St. Lucas, then I went to Jan van Eyck Academy uh, in the Fine Art Department. After it, I was invited by PS1 to go to New York. But, but always, and also the first time in, also in Van Eyck, that came like design, fine arts, uh, and theory together. And uh, it was always like that people tried to be very clever and very smart. And I was always thinking like, uh, wherever you are and whatever you think, what you think it's from that point of view very interesting. Mm -hmm. So, and what, what also was very confronting was that I saw when, I, when you go to New York or you go to or there is a, a scene in Amsterdam, or even in, in Belgium, Brussels, or Ghent, that they have their own kind of uh, deal, what is their uh, idea about, what is now very much important. Um, and I was questioning myself if this was the real thinking, because the real thinking was more um, directed by the context. 
um, and not from like a different pers 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 perspective. And do you think you have less pressure of context in Burgroo? Sorry? You, have you don't have this pressure, this context pressure? No. Yeah, I was thinking myself and I was also like kind of uh, what I was like uh, checking out with myself. If there is no context, is there is there still a kind of inner desire to create something? Mm -hmm. So that was not, uh, the context was not, there was just always go to that point, like uh, if there is, where comes the new perspe perspective? And um, can you have that in a place where there is actually no, per no cultural per perspective? Interesting. And let's uh, look at the first uh, image that I see. A, I see a mouse. I think, and then I was actually when I was selecting the images, the, the three last images are more reflecting about the subject tonight. But this is like a work that I made in Jan van Eyck Academy, and um, this was actually the idea that I tried to uh, the idea. How can you manage to uh, grab an ID? And was the idea that a mouse is always running away. So I was making. It's not a real mouse. No, it's a uh, video installation mm. and a sound installation. And what you see are two LCD uh, small screens. And I record the sound of my hand was going over the surface. And I filmed a mouse who was eating bread. And when he came closer, there was like a kind of detector who noticed you and then the image changed into an empty image of bread and you hear the sound of uh, this kind of sound uh, and the uh, uh, speaker system guide you to the other way. So, so it's you, running away. You never could, could see the mouse. Yeah, you could never catch it. Let's, let's see maybe the next uh, image. Uh, hmm. The title of this image is in concert, it's uh, 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 Mario Pironi and Dora Stiefelmeyer who runs a place in Rome who asked me to do something uh, with the idea of sound and um, I made a water piece because for me it was the relationship between water and sound like something okay. that you cannot take and what we actually did, we create a kind of line to uh, do the opposite of sound of make silence and you had like one water line, watermelon, the drinking element for the bird was on the uh -huh. same level, uh, the back of the pl plastic bag was filled with water and the shirt was like, and with the idea of a kind of aquarelle what was drying and um, created certain aspects of volume and notes and rhythm and and did these two works also already were reflecting back on... Um, was there like a, a memory of, of Borglom or, or the, maybe not literary Borglom, but the context you came from? Actually, actually, there is always this aspect of this mouse, which is very much to do with the countryside, where you suddenly see this kind of... or a bird that's flying away, or mm -hmm. this aspect of, of vegetables, uh, what came also later in the work. Uh, cutting this kind of watermelon, so there is this aspect of of um, countryside, yeah, yeah, yeah. but not literary. No. So yeah, 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 but there are like already aspects uh, yeah. occurring there. Mm -hmm. Maybe the next uh, image. There we have um, a scale model, uh, right? Is it, is the one on one uh, scale? Or? Uh, it's seventy five percent. Okay, and can uh, you explain what we what we see? Um, so, um, first I have to tell something about a project that I did in the museum. They asked me to do something with the collection and I made the collection one-to-one -one in black and white. And at the same moment I had the idea, it could be very interesting to do that one-to-one -one situation on an urban situation. Uh, to copy not uh, pieces out of the museum, but to do that with uh, uh, kind of city or and when I was doing that in Muka I was directly thinking that it would be great to do that with, with my village and then like six years ago the major of St. Ruiden asked me to do something in St. Ruiden and St. Ruiden is a city next to the village where I was, uh, where I was born and directly I felt this kind of desire of this major to become also 
uh, like a uh, part of the world, uh, international uh, art who would upgrade uh, his uh, place. And I was actually not very much interested to do the project because I felt like, okay, I, will, I have to explain what is the value of an artist and people are going to say, like, listen, this we can do also ourselves. And it's like, uh, so there is always this kind of friction between this thinker and this artistical mind. What I also felt very much when I started to, to express that I, was, that I want to be an, uh, develop an artist practice. So, so you felt a little bit utilized as, so the mayor was thinking we can use an artist yes, to make our voilà. environment more interesting. So I, I, I uh, told him, okay, I came, went to my ideas and I was thinking like, okay, from one hand to make a copy of the museum, but no, to make a copy of this village that would for me very interesting. For the other hand, I would cut down all his desire to become international and giving him his, his um, a uh, very local small village bring it to his uh, place. The third thing for me was interesting that I could uh, uh, tell my parents like listen uh, uh, it still has a certain value to, to, to work as an artist so I brought very different kind of aspects of uh, desires of different uh, uh, people together and but I was hoping that he would say no and then he says uh, first he said like wow it's super interesting then I hear for one year nothing and a year later he, they told me like listen it, it kept so much in our mind what it means all this development of uh, cities uh, globalization ID uh, the international um, so what we will do we will put two years of our production uh, of our, our cultural budget together uh, and I said yeah but then it's still not enough I said yeah the rest we find so okay yes <laughs> oh great so this Dorp um, the her Dorp the village is in 2011 and then uh, if you go to the next uh, slide there is this special house so, so this was 10 kilometers further where I, where I put the model and then we came to the point that um, you felt there was a certain basis, base what I create for that area, that there was like also other initiatives uh, in the landscape who came in Barcelona. So you felt there was already something t changing. There was a there was a room for artistic. The, the great thing is that you feel there is a certain crisis. Uh, there is also like an economic crisis, mm -hmm. also like a, a lack of perspective. So out of that kind of problem that you can create, you can. People are uh, interested in, okay, artists, now you can come with new ideas. Okay, so they're looking at you for, um, yeah, actually, you're, they're looking for, for solutions or possible solutions, maybe? But very practical, like, okay, <laughs> how, how can we uh, re-facilitate uh, uh, and re-energize uh, our place? Mm -hmm. You quite literally... This is, this is actually, um, we can't see it from here, maybe if we can go to the next slide, you can see it better. You see one part of the building, um, that it's an old house. This, this, um, this actually reset home. Yes. Mm -hmm. And it is, a, it is a house you know quite well, right? This was for me, so I uh, took the village, I stole the village and brought it to St. Ruiden. Yeah. So this was like a blank open space. And then 2011, like five, six years later, my grandmother became more difficult to stay in her house uh, without uh, help. So she has to go to the retired place. Um, and d directly I felt like emotionally that this was actually a very nice place because it's, it's two houses on the end of a dead ending road uh, with a view on landscape. Uh, and I really wanted to uh, to have this, but on the same moment I was making an exhibition where I was making kind of sculpture exhibition of myself with circles who were from three sides open, and all the idea was that I was making a show. I was uh, I put the circles over my work and invite other artists to do something on top of this kind of structures. Mm -hmm. 
And you quite literally translated yeah. that. So I had two things. First, I could continue my work of the village instead of bringing it 10 kilometers further. Here I rebuilt the house 10 centimeters in front of the original. And the second thing was that I could open the place uh, for people who have to think about something. So I want, wanted mm -hmm. to create place there f for myself because this was always the problem. I couldn't have that kind of place when I w would stay there. But with, by going away and developing something uh, abroad, I could come back with a completely kind of new... Um, so I open that and I invite artists to, to work in that, actually on the um, blueprint of my grandparents. Exactly. So actually in the word reset, there is a lot of, I mean, there is a lot of meaning in that word, I guess. Like you, you reset a place, is that, is that correct? I was searching for like, how can I, at a certain moment I came to the point of a reset to like to unplug everything and restart all the situation what I think was also very important for myself but also what's very important for the uh, for the place and for the area yeah yeah so there is, there is actually you you have this imperative to um, to to um, to improve the area or is it too much of a moral yes uh, that, and that's a questionary also today tonight like we always think that um, <clears throat> that we, from our point of view, can give an extra dimension. And the question is, uh, does a place need an, an extra dimension? Uh, and out of my experience of running two years the place, um, for one hand there are like, people who, who are sending their parallel projects, so they feel it's very important, but from the other, other hand, people really come to me and tell me like, but I never expect, like, we are so happy that there is more than just a cantina or some, there is also something to have a kind of extra dimension uh, for us. And sometimes I'm very surprised that when I see the people from the first glance, I was not thinking that there was this need, but there is, uh, strange enough, like a lot of people who are also telling me, like, for this artist, we went to this exhibition, we saw that exhibition, we saw that. and then I'm completely surprised that they, uh, also, no artists who are not very, not very known, but there is a thirst. Absolutely. Yeah, let's quickly go to the last two uh, pictures. Maybe um, what I see is a a sede, a hot house. Mm -hmm. This is from from your most recent. Uh, yes. Um, so what we saw before, the title of this is is this at home. Um, in that in that proce process, I was. During my uh, practice before, also very much interested in climate. And um, what I did now, I was always bringing one place to the other place. And during, after reset, I was a bit tired of uh, uh, making this kind of sculpture. And uh, I was thinking, <clears throat> instead of using material, how can we? Uh, uh, travel into space by changing climate. So I was thinking like a um, uh, kind of museal uh, uh, situation where I was making it wet, making it cold, making it warm again, and that you just walk into spaces where there was like a mist or where it was like, and that you just had that field where you walked in. And while I was developing that idea, I was thinking about uh, that a glass house would be like the most interesting part because you had also the relationship to the climate and to the... Um, and then out of that we are starting to uh, think about uh, uh, to reflect the world uh, from where we where you are that we then <coughs> just raise crops and that then we change them into bronze and from that point that we go to uh, think about different aspects of water that it's evaporating or it's freezing in the last element. Um, and then uh, in the second part, uh, in relationship to that uh, issue of the landscape. Yeah, maybe if you can see the last picture, it's another picture of a uh, close up. So, what do we see here? Like the evaporating water? Yeah. And there, there is like that we want to create a balance <coughs> between outside and inside. And we want to have in the center that is that that there is 
the same amount of wind inside as outside. So when it's storming outside, it will be also storm inside. Yes. So this is also a scale model, actually. This is a scale model, yeah. For and and so it will be. It's a plan to actually. Yeah, this, it in, 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 actually to convince uh, the, the villages. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> but I like it also very much sculptural to create this kind of sculpture between sculptural and this kind of exercise model. Yes. Thank you so much. Let's invite the other um, architects, artists.